So the following session, one of the first session in which we will be sharing our work, our reflections, uh, it will be around students from secondary education and students' perspectives, um, and also from students from higher education that are involved in the mentoring programs. Um, so um, the, our program today will start now with that session, uh, follow after a brief uh, uh, break uh, with uh, 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 our presentations of the intellectual outputs of the programs and comments from colleagues from other universities. So we will be having universities that are not uh, project partners listening to us and participating and making comments as university from South Africa, from uh, Kenya, from Brazil. Uh, and also students from those places will be chatting with us today. Uh, and we will also have an IT company also trying to uh, discuss how they see uh, our intellectual outputs as valuable and transferable for an IT company context. Uh, so we will be discussing about diversity, about inclusion, and we hope that all of these make sense also to you and to your institutions. Uh, as you can see in the website, you will have along the day different pools for you to answer and to, to uh, give us your perspective around topics uh, uh, related to the, to the sessions. And well, uh, we will now go for the second uh, session. This, uh, as I was saying, this second uh, this session that follows the opening session, uh, it will be uh, around students' expectations and students' agency uh, as uh, valuable actors, social actors in promoting in their own context, either in formal education or in other contexts, uh, as uh, relevant uh, actors, social actors in, in promoting inclusion uh, and also creating the comfortable environments in their in their in their social context in which they are participating. Uh, so uh, in this uh, session, we will have the participation. And I think that almost all of them are already here, I think. So just uh, to provide you an overview about the diversity of students that we have here today in this panel, uh, we have Maggie Wackling from Archbishop Holgate School, future students of Kappa College in York. United Kingdom, Francisca Bock from the Evangelist uh, Gymnasium Northern, Lower Saxony, um, in Germany, Nurkan Simsek, secondary education student, future students of bachelor's program at Erasmus University Rotterdam in the Netherlands, Amu Atian from St. Michael Secondary School in Mukuru, Nairobi, future students of Bachelor of Arts in Communications and School of Humanities, and social sciences at Strathmore University, Kenya. And as higher education students already, and as mentors, we will have Branka Lopes, mentor from the mentoring program of the Faculty of Psychology and Educational Science from the University of Porto, and also co-founder of the National Students Association of Educational Sciences. We will have also Farina Migura, uh, and she is also community mentor from, uh, from um, Germany, and Amina Korik from Erasmus University Rotterdam and mentor of also of the I Belong project. Um, so I would like to welcome you all to this, to this uh, session uh, and also thank you for your availability in, uh, in, in being with us. I Belong always involves students from higher education and they were very relevant providers of situated perspectives about their experience, their identities. Uh, so uh, I, will, I would start with the, with, the, with the secondary education students and um, to give us uh, your perspectives about uh, the expectations that you have regarding higher education, how do you see yourselves uh, becoming enrolled in this, uh, in this, uh, in, a, in a program in a specific university institution, or in this transition to other institution that you are that you are experimenting? Uh, how do you see themselves um, adjusting, uh, becoming included in a course? How do you see your relationship with your colleagues in this process? 
with teachers? What role do you think they will play to, to make your life um, pleasant and uh, to, to include you and to, to, to make you feel welcomed in, this, in these institutions? And, and also, uh, what kind of fears uh, do, you, do you have? when you think about this transition moment in your, in your educational uh, pathway. Um, I don't know who wants to start first, but maybe I, I would start with uh, um, Maggie. Do you want to start with your uh, experience? Uh, yes, so at the minute I have just finished uh, secondary school and I'm transitioning into going to a college which is in, an, in another city uh, from where I am at the minute. So one of my biggest fears is uh, having to travel there daily. Um, I'll be catching the train, which is something completely new for me. Um, and because I'm from a different city, I'm sort of, one of my biggest fears is how I'm gonna fit into these people that potentially already know each other or know the city. Um, and one thing that I'm really looking forward to about it is that at the minute I was pushed into doing academics by the school that I'm in, whereas the school that I'm choosing to go to next year is a performing arts college. So it's one of my biggest passions and I'm really excited to be able to try something that uh, I wasn't necessarily pushed in in the school that I'm at at the minute and to be able to get more one-on-one -on -one with the teachers um, and be sort of more immersed into the course. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, sorry. Um, Fran Francisca, what about you? How do you think that will be this transition to, to higher education institution? And, and how do you think that uh, the peers, your peers will have an active role in promoting your, your inclusion and welcoming you? So I think that fears are like normal, that you are excited to meet so many new friends and faces that you never had the opportunity to meet. And uh, I think that it is a lot of, uh, that you are nervous uh, and, yeah, just don't know what is going on now. And that uh, that is a really big change in life. And I hope that maybe I find uh, people that have the same fears and uh, that we can help each other and talk about that with uh, some people that could maybe help us uh, fit in and uh, meet with friends and like form a group or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, do you already have some information about uh, about the the the, the higher education institution that uh, you are willing to to attend? Uh, no, because I'm really early in Germany. It is like later. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, do you have any friends that are already in a higher education and then that give you some information about uh, this kind of environments? Uh, no. Unfortunately, oh, you are fresh. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you, Francisca. Um, so maybe we'll uh, go now to Nurkan, please. Uh, I will be going to the university in Rotterdam, and I am from Rotterdam, so that's not a fear for me. Um, uh, I don't really have expectations on you know, school because I kind of want to start with an open, fresh mind and just see what I will be going into. But I do fear that I maybe won't uh, be able to keep up with the amount of schoolwork or with the level, the classes. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you, the, the, the study program? Do you already did some research regarding what you are going to, to study? Yes, I did look at the courses and they do seem interesting. So I am glad I chose that uh, study. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and now, uh, Amu, what are your expectations?
I expect that the university will be exciting. And um, some of the fears that I have are, for example, the university that I'm going into has a variety of many people from different parts of the world. So it kind of sounds so fearful how you adapt to their culture, if you will have a good time with them, then uh, things to do with, you're not just used to the environment, you see. I've been used, quite used to the high school life. Uh, my friends, we just had a small circle. We shared a variety of things. Now, now that I'm transitioning into university, it's, it's quite difficult getting along with people you, you haven't gotten along with for some time. Then at the university, you'll find that some of the people are quite older. You'll find someone is doing, a, the, this is their second degree. For example, now for my course, I'm doing a Bachelor of Arts in Communication. Then I find somebody that had done law and now wants to, had pursued a law degree, then now wants to do a second degree in communication. Now the person is around 33 and we're in the same class. Uh, the age difference kind of makes it us to get along. And um, basically it's those kind of things. You see the small things, how you'll approach the people, if you'll feel, be, if you'll be comfortable staying at the university with the people, getting along, and uh, sometimes finances. And that is why uh, for, for, for my case, I applied for financial aid in my university because I couldn't afford to pay like all the school fees that were required in the university. So those are among the challenges that I experienced, but altogether it, ha it is a quite exciting experience and I would like to join university. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Amu. Uh, so um, students uh, uh, highlighted several um, fears that they, 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 that they have for the moment, um, some related with commuting, traveling, um, some regarding uh, other kind of uh, difficulties, financing difficulties, uh, generational gaps. Um, uh, I, I am wondering uh, what mentors think about these kind of fears that uh, that uh, these uh, these uh, invited students just just mentioned. Of course, that some of the students are you know with the, an open mind, open heart, you know, expecting the novelty of this experience. So probably you as mentors, you receive a lot of different students with different expectations, with different fears. How do you deal with, the, with these kind of issues? Because you, you probably have different strategies to, to, to deal with these. And how do you um, detect, how do you see what's going on? Because some students might be more um, uh, might voice more their their fears and expectations, and others might be more shy, more quiet. So, how do you deal with these different uh, challenges that you have as as mentors? I don't know. Maybe Branka could be the first one uh, to go. Yes. Yes. Um, I I think that I I was there too because I'm the first generation in my family in higher education. So I also had this fear of not being integrated uh, in, in the, at the university uh, because I was also alone. Uh, my friends did not go to higher education. They, uh, they stayed at uh, secondary education but uh, I, I had a mentor too, so it was a really good help to calm me down. <laughs> uh, but with my, men with my mentees, I also had a mentee that had the uh, difficulties financially and she was far away, so she needed a bedroom. And for the time that she didn't have one, I said, you can stay in my place until you find one. So we, we were talking with other colleagues, other mentors, other mentees, and see if someone has a bedroom to, to rent. 
because it it's always a help and we, we can talk with the, with our friends and find a solution because the the first year at university is really scary for many people it's all a new experience if we can have 18 years old we can have 40 years old no matter what it's also it's always a, a new experience and the fears are are normal they 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 are normal they make part i would say uh, and i think that maybe the the shy people that can, won't find you and will not uh, talk to you maybe you can not make pressure but making pressure <laughs> you know uh, with my mentees that, that are more shy i try not to every day send them a message but once a week uh, once a month maybe uh, and see if they need something academically or not because during a pandemic uh, it's really difficult uh, to stay tuned to everyone because we are so tired of uh, technologies and being being with a person with personally with someone is really difficult too because we are afraid to to be sick right and but i try to make contact with them uh, some of them uh, just not continued at the higher education because they were not prepared for that and we have to understand too that sometimes people think they are prepared but they are not and i i give my support and i continue to to talk with them see if they need something to even if they are not in our faculty so i think that being stay in contact with per, if people is really important for that integration and then things happen naturally naturally they will make their friends naturally they will see that teachers are not that bad as the at secondary teachers say say to us that they are i think that's it Thank you, Branca. Well, you you call our, our attention to something that, in my perspective, is very important. It's because as you are more close to newcomers, to first-year students, you feel more quickly um, difficulties that they are going through sometimes. And if, of course, it's a... It's a, a it's a challenging uh, transitional time, you know, when students are going from secondary education to higher education, all the adaptation, even if they are living the same in the same city as universities is located. Uh, but of course, there are a, a few specificities that you as mentors that are so close to students that feel more quickly and uh, you are, well, you, um, very relevant mediators as well uh, to, to provide, for example, the, the study programs department with information that probably as, as teachers and uh, are not so aware of. Uh, and of course that you raise another problem, which is, well, in disruptive times as we went through this uh, past year, um, of course, that, uh, you know, different layers of challenges uh, came uh, in the way. Um, well, I don't know, uh, Farina, do you, do you think the same? How, how in what way uh, old challenges uh, disappeared and new challenge came with the pandemic? And how did you uh, adapt the, the strategies? Uh, in the mentoring program to face these these uh, troubles that uh, Branka also mentioned. Um, yeah, I would definitely agree with Branka that there are different challenges that we experienced during the pandemic, and as Francisca and Branka both already uh, said. Um, 
there are fears and those fears are normal, but it's so important to communicate about those things. And uh, well, a communication is always a lot easier when, when you see each other in person. And um, yeah, so we as community mentors, we try to, to improve the, the, the uh, communication between the, the new students, the first year students. And um, well, what I also find challenging is um, to stay connected among us community mentors because we are in the same, the same situation of the pandemic, of the coronavirus. So, but um, yeah, and I think the communication uh, among us is kind of built a base for the community mentoring program. Uh, but I think uh, my, my fellow students think the same, that communication is very important. And um, so we, we uh, try to, to apply this and then we try to, to organize some, some socials, well, digital based socials, but we try to, to do that. And we try to connect uh, the, the first year students uh, with each other we we try to connect with them and uh, my opinion uh, was or my my point of view is that those uh, those socials we make we made um, helped a lot with um, dealing with any problems because then we talked about anything and uh, yeah those problems were solved Thank you very much. Uh, so Amina, uh, do you feel the same as your uh, fellow mentor colleagues uh, in, this, uh, in this, you know, a kind of innovative way of getting closer to students and, and, and the issue of communication even among mentors, the mentors community? Um, th this, uh, this kind of, uh, you know, this kind of work, uh, um, was one of the issues that attracted you to become a mentor? Would you were, were you expecting this kind of uh, uh, this kind of uh, mediation uh, in this experience? Like between the mentors or with the mentees? Uh, with the mentees. Yeah. Well, um, when I started studying at Erasmus, I already had one year, like five years before, I already studied there, so. I already knew the place and I knew how important it was to um, to know the surroundings because in Rotterdam, most of the students are not from Rotterdam. So what I would do at the, in the first year, like two years ago, I would take my mentee and I would just go on a tour and we would just walk past the buildings and I would tell her where students can study. For example, the psychology students sit in a different building than the law students. So you can just find your own type of students, if I can say it like that. So you can sit with them, study with them. And um, it will actually help them like break the ice um, because then they have, that they're not all alone, like and alone at the campus and alone studying. Then they have like kind of a buddy that shows them around. And like what Amu said before, with the with the age gap, it's like when I started studying, like my my first year, there was uh, I was 24, 25 years old. I had students that were 18 years old, and there was also a man who was like 53 years old, and we were all together like in the first first year. And at first, it sounds really like scary and like, oh, what is he doing here? And what are <laughs> like the the age differences are so weird, but like after one month or something, you just get to know everyone, everybody, and you just realize like everybody's there to learn and everybody actually has the same fears. They just don't speak it up. And I think that's what Farina also said. It's very important to have the communication because at the end of the day, you will recognize so many fears that you have as a new student. Other people have it too, but they just don't speak up about it. So I think like Farina said, the communication, like that's that's key in this, in this kind of situation because as soon as you get to know the other like the other students and stuff like that you can see like it's it's actually it's actually not that scary and we also tried that like i think in the first year because then i knew more men mentors than i know this year we tried to meet up 
at the end of the school year or at first at the half, but then Corona came. So we weren't able to do that, but we actually wanted to meet like with all the mentors and all the mentees together. So that would like help the mentors to meet each other. And like what Farina said with the communication and the mentees would be like, feel, they would feel more at ease because they would know like, okay, I also like, I'm meeting other students. They also have mentors. What are their problems? What are they, what difficulties are they facing? And then they can like, link up that way too so it's like a win-win situation for both but we still weren't able to do all of that because of like of course corona and stuff but i think from september um they expect in holland everything to go back to normal like everybody's gonna go back to campus again so i hope we were go we are gonna be able to like get all the students together all the mentors and we're gonna bring more faculties to the mentor uh, to the iBlog project. So that's good. So I think it's gonna be a good combination and a good mix of everything. Thank you. Well, I have this question to 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 uh, to ask you, and you already answered it because my question would be: Well, what are you planning to do as long as you return to a normal a normal life? Because I think it's affected a lot this kind of initiative, this kind of community, because. Well, the, the online environments are okay, where we are in one and you we may communicate, but it's different, isn't it, for this kind of uh, work that you, that you do and this kind of help that you do. Um, uh, just a last quick question for you, which, what kind of other kind, what, what other types of support the university provides to first year students uh, besides the mentoring that you are developing this uh, is there any kind of other support that uh, that university have as a general university as a as a whole as um, within my faculty we have like a student advisor but as most of the times it's like ex especially now with corona it's very crowded people like are making appointments all the time so if for example if i want to make an appointment now i can talk to him in like a month time. So they don't have anybody they can actually directly like talk to, except for the mentors about how they are feeling. Um, they can talk to their tutors or teachers, but they also have to be like very formal with them. So it's not like they can talk and somebody will um, actually, actually understand them on the same level like us mentors will do, because we were also in the same situation as they were. So we would understand more than I think a student advisor or a tutor or a, another teacher, I think. So I think it's actually where we're kind of like the mentor, are actually the only people that can directly uh, help the students and talk about these things and stuff like that. Mm, thank you. So um, uh, moving back again to students, uh, uh, Megan, how, how are you preparing yourself to this transition to this new institution? Um, well, I've already started trying to make um, some connections with other students that I know are going to be attending that are from the same city as me. So then next year when I'm gonna be commuting, I won't be so alone. I'll have someone there with me. Um, and actually this week I'm going to visit the school um, and do the whole train journey and uh, see what the what actually happens in the school day. Um, so it doesn't feel so brand new next year because um, it's a big change. There's a lot less uh, structure and more freedom and independence, which is one thing I was quite nervous about. So I'm making sure that I get a feel for what what the day is actually going to look like next year. Mm -hmm. and, and Maggie, this this training is organized by the by the institution. Yes, it's like an open day for for. Okay, that's that's uh, that's interesting. Thank you. Um, so, and I move the same question for you. So, are, how are you preparing? Uh, and uh, uh, for this new experience. Um, and uh, if uh, I would like to know if uh, um, secondary education teachers uh, give you some advice to 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 this uh, to this transition to become it more more easier. Yes, actually, mine is a very different case because 
the university that I'm joining, our university was picking us when we were in the second year of high school. So they would train us and they would mentor us and we'd be going to the university each and every Saturday. And we would attend tuition. We would be shown around the school and also we'll get to know the lecturers at the university. We were made to feel like most of the life at the university, how it's like. So, and um, after I was done with high school, they would call us. And now if you achieve the grade to join university, they called us, they talked to us, they showed us around the school. So about the school environment, there's nothing I really fear. It's mostly adapting to the people at the university. Uh, but the atmosphere is quite nice. The university, it's quite comfortable. I can maneuver my way around the university because I have been there now for, I have been mentored there for two years before I finished high school, now that I'm joining it. Then uh, it's, the difference now is when it comes to the students at the university and now the financial needs. Because about commuting, it's not quite far off to go to the university. So everything is quite sorted on that aspect. The university had played their role well, yeah. Thank you. Well, this is an interesting experience. You, you are already familiar with the, with the environment. So what about you, uh, Francisco? Um, so in my school, they give us really much information and like magazines where you can read uh, which universities you can join and what uh, they offer you and uh, sometimes we also um, drive there so that we see the school and um, have the experience to uh, walk through the rooms there and stuff like that but uh, they don't actually um, so it is more like for everyone and not just for you and what you like so for example uh, we were um, we, we were visiting a university that uh, shows like all the medical stuff uh, and uh, that's something I don't really like so um, yeah that was not really helpful for me but for other people. Thank you. Uh, from what you heard from uh, the colleagues that are mentors, also students but mentors, um, would you think about joining a mentor, a mentoring program in the future? Do you see yourself in uh, doing uh, something like that? Um, I think it is really helpful uh, for um, the first year that you have someone you can talk to and that you know you get help from. And I think that makes you feel safe and maybe comfortable in that situation when you like don't know what to do or have situations that you before don't have to deal with and that you um, yeah may just don't know what to do now and I think that is a really important job they do. <laughs> Thank you. Nurkan, how are you preparing yourself to higher education? Uh, I already know how I have to go to the university because it's just a matter away for me. And um, we also went on a few open days to the universities close to us with school, but it was uh, just like Francesca said, it's with the whole class and also for studies you may not want to do. And um, I also signed up for the introduction week of my university. Mm -hmm. And um, what this information, did you get this information from uh, uh, online uh, search? Uh, the university send you with this kind of information by email? How do you, do you know about these initiatives? Uh, they emailed me after I signed up with the information about the introduction week. And um, also my teacher at school told me about it. Mm -hmm. um, well, the same question. Do you see yourself being part of a mentoring uh, program team in the future? 
Yes, it does sound helpful for first year students because it sounds like it will make the transition easier. So I would sign up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to make a final uh, remark. Um, maybe I would ask uh, mentors to to make a last uh, advice to 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 these students that are now preparing themselves to to higher education. What is the big uh, advice that you might give to these to these students now that they are preparing themselves to this new experience? Maybe Branka. Yes, uh, I would like to start because. Uh, I would say to get involved in all acti activities that you see that you, you could like it. Because when I came to university, I thought that I was only going to study and go out with friends. But it was, it was not true, as uh, Professor Sophia said. Um, I'm a co-founder of the National, National Association of, of Educational Sciences Students. Uh, and I'm also part of the Students Association of, of my faculty. Uh, and it's a, a really, and also a, a mentor in our mentoring program. Uh, and it's really good because you are not only studying and you have these, these activities to help you uh, see other perspectives, uh, know other people, uh, get involved in, in your community. And that's something that will be, will be more important in, in my, my course than uh, only the classes. The classes are the, the little part of university. But also important. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Branka. Um, so, Amina, what do you think? What is your biggest advice to, to these uh, students? Um, well, I would say not to be nervous. Like, just keep in mind that there are all the other students around you. They actually feel the same as you do. You just have to talk to them. Like Branka said, get into activities. Um, get to know them um, and also at Erasmus you have a lot of um, student associations so for every student there's a kind of association um, is it even a, or you, it could be a cult cultural one or a sports uh, society or whatever it is you can find what suits you most and just join them and you can actually meet more students if you feel like you, you have the need to get to know more people or if you feel scared or whatever so just know that it's a normal feeling what you're having we all had it I had I had it like my fellow mentors had it too just embrace it enjoy it and yeah 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 learn thank you Amina Farina um I could just agree with my fellow mentors what they have been or what they said it's so normal to to be kind of scared of what happens because it's such a big step that you're going to do, but uh, that's not that's not uh, so bad. So, like Amina already said, all your other fellow students feel the same, and maybe if you if you focus on that that bit, then it connects even more. Thank you, Farina, and thank you, you all, for your, for your um, uh, advices to the students and also for sharing your experience. I think that we have here a nice portrait of what's going on in universities in different parts of the world. Um, I, I was thinking that would be nice to have this, you know, international network of uh, mentors that are uh, connected with the I belong and with these extensions to other other places that we don't know so so well. So, but we, you raised a lot of issues here, 
um, regarding how we might uh, be more uh, inclusive in our institutions. And, and you mentioned aspects that sometimes uh, from our own uh, positionality, we are not so aware of. So this is very important, this sharing moment so to all of us as teachers uh, involved uh, uh, together with you in this, in this effort. And also you mentioned something that is important, which is classes are important, but, uh, but uh, you know, education, it's not, doesn't stop there. So there's a lot involved in, uh, in education, not only in higher education, but that you may, may also, um, if you engage in several uh, activities that are always available in higher education institutions, uh, you, you might benefit as a, as a student and, and in your um, personal construction, construction of yourself as, your, uh, as a, your identity as a student. So, uh, well, as, as some of you said, engage, get engaged. Um, okay, thank you uh, to you all uh, for participating once more and being here with us from different parts of the world, which is one of the benefits of you uh, organizing these events online is much easier. 